Hi, this is David, and on this YouTube channel we talk about software development and tools and tricks and tips uh, that I use as a software developer. So the goal is that you hopefully learn something in every video and something interesting. And on this video, uh, we're going to be talking about state machines, and specifically state machines in JavaScript and JavaScript apps. And in this first video, we're going to be talking about uh, state machine basics. What are state machines? What could they be used for? And all of that stuff. In um, part two, we're going to actually implement a state machine in a JavaScript app. So pay attention and stay tuned for part two if you want to learn how to do that. And subscribe, and you will get that notification when the part two video shows up. So, what is a state machine? A state machine is a tool to manage state in your app. So what is state? State is the current situation that your app is in. So for example, you may recognize variables like is loading or a current user or maybe you know form uh, submitting something like that so these are all variables that we use to implicitly define our state so what do I mean by implicit so implicit is uh, the definition is implied though not plainly expressed so in this example is loading if our component or our app is in a loading state, we may put this flag for true. And that is implicitly saying like, hey, this is, this is loading, uh, but, and then we, we could assume that the state of the app is that it is loading. But we're not doing something like, you know, the state is loading. We're not, explicitly defining our state like what this sentence is doing we're just implicitly defining it by setting a variable and we could assume that the state is loading maybe it's actually not loading maybe this is actually a bug we don't know but if we create a state um, and if we create a a map of our state we could define our states explicitly so what does explicitly mean? Explicit means stated clearly and in detail, leaving no room for confusion or doubt. So this is what state machines do for us. This is the value that they bring to our apps, is they clearly um, state in detail what the state of the app is. And we're specifically talking about finite state machines. So that means there could only be a set number of states. So if I had this, um, if I had this app right here, where we had is loading, and maybe we had uh, an init state, or we had a, a waiting state, or something like that, uh, there's only two states of our app here. So there's not like an unlimited amount, and that's what finite state means. And we could actually define this um, in a graph. So this is a representation of a state machine. And based off of uh, the properties of what makes a state machine a state machine, that it has finite state, that it can only be in one state at a time, and it has to follow certain rules for trans transitioning into different states, uh, we could actually create a graph for this. So what's really great about this is you could say, hey, this is the plan for this component, and you could map out or graph out the state, and you could share this with your coworkers. You could share this with designers. You could share this with your product managers so that everyone's on the same page of what this, the possible states of this app should be and how it will work. 
and this is a tool, I'll post the link in the video description, but this is a, a tool that this person made um, to represent state machines. And you can see that the state machine on the left right here, I mean on the right, is uh, represented just by a JavaScript object. And what this tool does is it takes this JavaScript object and it turns it into a graph. So you can see that there's a property called states and it's an object and each key is a different state of the app. So we have idle, loading, error, and success. And you can see the states are represented uh, by the boxes here, idle, loading, success, and error. And we give it an initial state, which is idle. And we say, hey, on this event, we're going to change state. So on the, on the submit event, if I hear this, if I hear this event, I'm going to transition to the loading state. So you can imagine you get submit. I could actually hit the submit event here by clicking. It hit submit. Now I'm in the loading state. Now there's only two possible scenarios. I either transfer into the success state or the error state. And so when now when I'm in the loading state, when I hear an event called payment received, I'll transition into the success state. Or if the same machine here is payment failed, it'll transition to the error state. So let's do uh, payment failed, just to see what happens here. And you can see that the, the events are on these arrows here. And on the error state, there's only one possible way to go. So we could, we could only go back to loading. We can't go to success directly. And if you notice, uh, even from idle, you can't go from idle to error or success. So there's a certain path that's defined by the state machine. And what this does is it gives you clear guidelines to help you debug and figure out how your app is working. I'm sure you've come across errors where uh, it's hard to trace down a bug because the state of your app, uh, you, uh, there may be a bug where like I said earlier, uh, maybe is loading. It's in the loading state, but this variable is actually false. Or say we got an error from an HTTP request and we didn't handle it properly. So our, now our app is in a different state. And it's the state is implied by using all these variables. And it, it makes it hard to track down bugs and see what, what state your app is in. But by using something like this, you could say, okay, well, I'm in the loading state. This is where my issue is happening. But there's only one state where I could have come from, and that's the idle state. So maybe I'll start looking for the bug in here or on the submit event. And so that, that helps you narrow things down, and, and you know exactly what the state of your app is in at all times. And uh, this is a representation of a form. So you're submitting a form, and one common problem when you submit a form is, you know, when you when I push the button on submit, what if I push it twice? Will it submit twice? Um, so these are things you usually have to handle uh, manually. But if you're using a state machine, you're using a paradigm called uh, event, and then you'll go into state. And then you'll go to action. So this is the event state action paradigm. What most people use is the event action paradigm, where your program or your app is constantly listening to events, and on those events will take an action. And so the most common you know, example is a click event. So you listen for a click event on a button, and once you hear that click event, you dispatch uh, a pro uh, an action, so maybe an HTTP request. Now the difference is you'll get that same event, the click, 
but then you'll transfer state. So on that click event, you'll say it's called submit. You'll transfer state to loading. And then loading, the loading state is actually what's going to be responsible for dispatching an action. And so even if the person clicks the button twice, uh, the, the HTTP request will not be submitted twice. So you're not going to, if you're doing like a credit card request to charge a credit card, for example, you're not going to charge the credit card request because only the submit event happens in the idle state. So once you transfer to the loading state, you no longer can even fire this idle, the, the um, submit event again. You'll only be able to go to either listen to the payment received and go to success or listen to the payment failed and go to error. So it, it defines a very clear pathway for your app to follow and solves a lot of those state problems. And so that is, those are the basics of what a state machine is. You could see that in this example, it's just a JavaScript object. Uh, and this is a very simple example, obviously, but we'll make a more complex one later. And usually, uh, the way that I've seen other people uh, build these state machines is they'll use a state machine uh, library or package. And this one's called X state. And so what you do is you define your state in uh, JavaScript and you pass that to X state. And X state will give you certain methods to use on that state that you've created. So it'll give you like a transition method so that it'll help you transition from state to state. So those are the basics of what a state machine is. And in the next video, we'll actually be implementing a state machine in a real JavaScript app, and we'll be using xState to do that. All right, stay tuned for the next video. Thank you for watching.